Right now at five, tackling affordable housing head on. How the city of Duluth hopes to curb the issue. Plus, after four years, the haunted ship is back in action tonight. We're taking a live look at the scares inside the urban. And later, the dogs are back on the ice this weekend at Amsoil. What fans need to know before puck drop. You're watching Live at 5 on Live Local CBS 3. Welcome to the CBS 3 News Live at 5. Here's a live look at Duluth City Hall tonight, where earlier today, Mayor Larson announced an important proposal that could have big implications on affordable city housing. Good evening. I'm Natalie Grant. Kristen is on assignment tonight. Thanks for joining us. For many in Duluth, affordable housing is hard to come by. An issue so bad, it's causing employers to lose their workers and renters to move away. CBS 3's Kendall Jarbo explains the city's plan to deal with the problem. Much needed relief could be coming to Duluth's housing crisis. Mayor Emily Larson announced her proposed solution today, a housing trust fund. Larson says the trust fund would allow the city to invest at least $6 million into affordable housing with the help of local partners. It would invest in affordable housing through various programs like providing low or no interest loans to housing developers to create units to buy or rent. Homeowners could also apply for money to build a secondary dwelling on their primary lot. City Councilor Zach Filipovich says right now Duluth is 3,500 housing units short of what it needs. People make our economy work and people grow our tax base so let's make that easier for folks to build a life in Duluth and the Housing Trust Fund will help do that. Money from the fund could also be used to rehabilitate neighborhood projects with the ultimate goal of giving people more places to live and a higher quality of living space. All of this requires approval from the city council. An ordinance will be presented to the council on October 11th and it will be voted on October 25th. All right, thanks, Kendall. Now, if the plan is approved, the city expects the program to begin in early 2022. Well, also at tonight's meeting, counselors will have the first conversation about recognizing harm and trauma facing American Indian and Alaska Native communities. They're specifically calling out the nation's boarding school policy, along with dozens of other cities across the country. The policy took indigenous students from their families and placed them in boarding schools across the country up until the 1970s. It's been widely criticized for years, most recently after the remains of 215 indigenous children were found in unmarked graves outside a boarding school in British Columbia. Now, if this resolution is passed, it would show Duluth supports Congress's investigating of the old policy and ways to heal the trauma. Now, the resolution would be only be symbolic of the council's support. The Duluth City Council does not have authority over the U.S. Congress. The council is expected to discuss the matter to Tonight and then vote on Monday's meeting. Well, one of Duluth's spookiest attractions is back in the harbor this year after four years away. The haunted ship technically takes place every October, but restoration work and the pandemic have forced organizers to shut its doors since 2017. Now the haunted ship is finally celebrating an opening night once again as they prepare for a new year of frightful fun. CBS 3's Quinn Gorham is live from the haunted ship tonight. Quinn, what can people expect from this year's return? Well, Natalie, we're really feeling the Halloween spirit over here in the Haunted Ship. It's a year that's sure to be full of spooks and frights for everybody. And workers here say that it's a year-long process to get everything prepared. Steve Rankila, director of internal operations at the deck, says the crew's already planning for next year's Haunted Ship. The actors attend scare school to learn how to scare people properly, and workers attend yearly conventions to get ideas for props and rooms around the ship. They use all five senses to scare attendees, including smell, which they artificially use in each room to add to the atmosphere. Rankula says after four years away, people are all over are excited to be back on the haunted ship. The public is, is excited too. It's, it's a tradition for many people. They travel from all over the uh, lower Midwest to come to the haunt for the weekend. The ship is open Thursday through Saturday from now until the end of October. Now, I'll be honest with you, Natalie, I'm not normally the biggest fan of haunted houses, but I will tell you they did think of everything. I mentioned the smell a couple seconds ago. 
it's it's potent. <laughs> so um, a lot of fun surprises in here for everybody involved, and uh, that should be it should be a good time. I don't don't want to spoil anything, but you should make your way down here for sure. Yeah, absolutely. But it looks like you could be scaring some people tonight with the face paint you have on there, really blending into the atmosphere there. But thanks for showing us around, Quinn. It looks great. Well, Dave joins us now for a quick look at that weather. I know we're not having as much fun as Quinn is out there, but no. sure was a nice day out there today. Yeah, it started as a nice day, but if you keep an eye to the sky, you'll notice that the clouds are starting up high and thin and getting lower and thicker as time goes on. That's the progression of a couple of lows coming our way to bring us a 20 to 40 percent rain chance later tonight. Once that comes across, it could keep on coming through Sunday. This is a live look at what's going on right now in Jay Cook State Park. And you know, just a month ago, we were worried that the fall colors would come and go in a blip because of the drought but now that we've started to get fairly decent rains and the temperatures are staying warm it looks like we're really holding on to the colors the leaves you know it's not too orange or red or yellow down in uh, jay cook at least right now but of course that'll change as time goes on and here's what's coming our way then for tonight and the weekend a pair of lows to our west is really just two of potentially four lows that are going to try to affect us in a wetter way here tonight through sunday short-term forecast says tonight's rain chance is 20 percent in minnesota a little bit better for wisconsin and the up then it becomes a 40 percent shot for minnesota on friday slightly better chances for wisconsin and the UP. We'll talk about potential rain totals in more detail coming up a few more minutes here into the news. All right, thanks, Dave. Pfizer and Biotech have officially submitted their request to the FDA to authorize emergency use of their COVID-19 vaccine for children ages 5 to 11. Now, new data is showing that kids make up more than a quarter of new cases right now. Meanwhile, down in Florida, Governor Ron DeSantis is facing a lawsuit over his executive order to block any form of mask mandates in schools. Plaintiffs are, are claiming that the move violates the Americans with Disabilities Act. A new Florida state rule also backed by DeSantis lets families decide whether or not to send their child to school after being exposed to COVID-19. Anyone that may have been in contact uh, without symptoms uh, you know, should be able to stay in school. They can be monitored. The parents can be notified that there may have been a case. The parents you know, have a right to have their healthy kids in school. The FDA will discuss using the vaccine in children ages 5 to 11 during their advisory meeting on October 26. Minnesota health care leaders say the state's growing COVID numbers are concerning. MDH Commissioner Jan Malcolm says based on CDC guidelines, every county in Minnesota has high rates of COVID transmission. There are almost 900 COVID patients hospitalized in the state right now. Also worrying, Malcolm says the state is seeing 2,000 cases a week in kids under 12. There are very few pediatric ICU be beds available in the state. Malcolm says people need to remember COVID is not just a concern for older adults. This disease can and does impact young and healthy people, including children. It's true and we're grateful for the fact that children are generally less likely to have severe illness, but there are sometimes tragic exceptions to that rule. Malcolm says they're also concerned about hospital capacity where both beds and personnel are stretched thin. She says every Minnesotan needs to do their part to support health care workers, including getting vaccinated and masking up. Still to come on CBS 3 News Live at 5, a maze of maze. Get ready for this corny Carlton contest while you still can. Lend us your ears after the break as we bring you around the Northland with all the details. CBS 3 News is brought to you by Ralph Eye Care Specialists. Just like gray hair, cataracts are a common side effect of aging. A cataract is the natural clouding of the lens inside the eye. At Ralph Eye Care Specialists, our board-certified ophthalmologists offer cataract surgery to help you see better longer. Our team will work with you to create a pleasant surgical experience and a great surgical result. Call now to learn more about cataract surgery and to schedule a cataract evaluation at Ralph Eye Care Specialist. 
Villa Marina Health and Rehabilitation Center is a beautiful one-level facility in Superior, Wisconsin with 24-hour skilled nursing care. With a five-star rating by Medicare, you can expect high-quality care. We offer a variety of services, including restorative care after a hospital stay, intensive rehabilitative therapy care after surgery, or long-term care for those who are no longer able to handle the necessities of daily life on their own. To learn more, call or visit Villa Marina Health Center in Superior. Eric Paulson here from Discover Wisconsin. Join me and the rest of the crew every week on this station for all things Wisconsin. Continue the adventure on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and discoverwisconsin.com. And don't forget to subscribe to The Cabin Podcast, available wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. School visits are an important part of kind of being a part of the community outside of the TV station here. When I was in sixth grade, that's when I learned meteorology was it for me. Being on the other side of that now, for me being able to kind of pursue that, it's important for me to then be able to get back into the community. If I can go into a classroom and get just one person who was interested or just one person who, you know, leaves there knowing like, wow, I learned something new today. For me, I did my job and that means a lot to me. Watch meteorologist Caitlin Moffitt weekdays at 5 a.m. If you love them enough to crawl into a play place to get them to come down, then surely you'll check NHTSA.gov slash the right seat to make sure they're in the right car seat. Welcome back to the CBS 3 News Live at 5. Here's a live look from Spirit Mountain where we just found out today that renovations on the Upper Chalet will cost an additional $5 million. These changes were made without the board's knowledge. Dave will be in with this week's full forecast in just a few minutes. But first, let's take a look around the region. Setting Iron Range leaders, setting an example for the next generation and the return of the Whistle Stop Marathon bringing thousands through Shawamigan Bay. All that and more as we take you around the Northland, city by city. Well, we are starting off tonight in Corn County, Carleton, Minnesota at the Rue Rage Corn Mage. If you haven't made your way to this perfect fall celebration yet, you still can before it closes down on Halloween. In addition to the eight-acre corn maze, there will be a straw bale maze, hay rides, horse rides, a petting zoo, and even a ninja course where visitors can work on their ninja corn centration. The event grounds and corn maze are wheelchair accessible. The maze is open Thursday through Sunday. Well, next we're heading to Hibbing, Minnesota, where dozens of students from four different Iron Range school districts spent the day at Hibbing High, learning what it takes to become a leader in their community. Students worked with leaders from mining, healthcare, law enforcement, nonprofits, and local governments to solve a community funding issue. CBS 3's Kristen Vaki was a group leader for the media team. She helped three students put together two mock newscasts following discussions between city councilors and a number of organizations. Kristen tells us the students did a wonderful job. And we're wrapping up tonight in Ashland, Wisconsin, for an annual tradition spanning 26.2 miles. The Memorial Medical Center Whistle Stop Marathon is now just two days away. Now, though this year's registration is limited due to COVID-19, there will still be 1,800 racers between the marathon and half marathon, making their way through Shawamigan Bay. There will also be a 10K race and a 5K. Now, though registration is full, you can still make your way down to Ashland this weekend to support the North land tradition. Well, if there's something going on in your neighborhood that you think we should know about, send us an email and it might be featured as we go around the Northland city by city. So to come live at five, the first taste of fandom since March of 2020. The Bulldogs are back at Amsoil this weekend. What fans need to know in just a couple of minutes. 20 years ago this morning, well, folks woke up to the record low temp for our area, 24 degrees, 2001. Today, our temperatures were warmer than normal again, hitting 69 degrees at the airport in Duluth. Normals in the upper 50s. I do think for the week ahead, we're going to still keep running warmer than normal. But now after a couple of days of dry weather, wet weather could be coming and that could dominate the week ahead. We'll show you that seven day forecast coming up after the break. We're kicking off the new season in NYC. I'm putting the y'all in New York. You didn't even know it was there, but it is now. I didn't realize you were so unhappy. Because you never bothered to ask. 
want some company? What if we go someplace else? Well, you have a mind. I'm struggling with an ethical crisis. You might be overthinking this. I thought about it, and I'm not. Pastor Jeff is here. You gotta talk to the pastor. Get. Sheldon? Excuse me, I have to get. The new season of Young Sheldon begins tonight at 8, 7 central on CBS. I remember my son was going to grow up without a father. I didn't think someone at 23 could be diagnosed with breast cancer. I was probably the healthiest I had been in my life. Early detection of a melanoma saved my life. I survived testicular cancer because of early detection. I survived cancer not once but twice because of early detection. During the pandemic, you may have delayed or canceled routine cancer screenings. It's time to get those appointments back on the books. Early detection saves lives. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters in this station. The Royal Enfield Bullet was designed in 1955 and not updated until 2008. It takes an experienced hand to keep one running. I've ridden in the rain and the snow, but prefer not to. That's why motorcycles and meteorology go together so well. It also takes an experienced hand to make an accurate riding forecast. As our region's longest serving meteorologist, I think I have the touch needed to get it right. Watch Dave Anderson weeknights at 5, 6, and 10. Get your news on the go. The CBS3 mobile app. One of Duluth's spookiest attractions is back in the harbor after four years away. We tell you more coming up. There's a line of lows off towards our west. They want to bring us rain for the weekend. Tonight at 6 on CBS3. If you love them enough to crawl into a play place to get them to come down, then surely you'll check NHTSA.gov slash the right seat to make sure they're in the right car seat. Now, the CBS3 Duluth WeatherMax forecast with meteorologist Dave Anderson. Boy, our weather's been repetitive this week. We've been cooler by the lake, warmer inland, cloudier by the lake, sunnier inland, and on top of the lakeside communities has been fog persistently now for, what, four nights in a row? Yeah, another dense fog advisory to talk about for lakeside communities tonight, as usual, until 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. And it includes Carleton County, Douglas County, Southern St. Louis County, and some stripes up the North Shore and along the South Shore as well. So just like the past few nights, our caveat is drive cautiously for the morning commute. Now, tomorrow, on top of fog and clouds, now, those clouds could finally start yielding some rain in our region. We'll talk about how much is possible through Sunday. Coming up after this, look at our current conditions from Duluth International Airport. 66 degrees, 68% for the humidity, easterly, southeasterly wind, 8 miles per hour. That's been a common theme, too, the last couple of days. And air pressure at the surface on the higher side. That's been a common theme as well. Right now, 30.08 inches of mercury. But again, not sufficiently high, sufficiently aloft to chase away all chances of clouds. Some towns have had it better than others if you're a Sun fan. Well, current temperatures, if you like it warmer than normal, this has been a good period for you. The normal is 57. Right now in the UP, we're running 68 to 75. Wow, Ironwood's one of our hot spots today. Wisconsin's running 59, near normal for Superior to 73 down in Hayward. And the current numbers in Minnesota include toastier readings down towards Moose Lake and Willow River at 72. And then a little bit cooler by the lake again into the 60s and then perking up into the low 70s from Big Fork towards International Falls, including Orr and even Ely. So being up north doesn't always mean being on the chilly side. Now let's start talking about our rain chances. Now it looks like there could be as many as four lows set to give us clouds and rain chances here. This is the one to the south whose northern fringes are going to try to reach into Wisconsin here tonight. And then that's backed up by a pair over towards the Dakotas that'll also help bring a chance of rain beginning tonight. And now there's an extra one coming in out of Idaho to back all of this up and keep our rain chance probably going all the way through Sunday. So anywhere from a 30% chance tonight to 40, 50 tomorrow, 60 on Saturday, 40% chance on Sunday. Once we get into Monday though, then higher pressure settles in and our rain chance goes away. But maybe only for a day. When you see the seven day forecast, you'll see that rain chances return as early as Tuesday. How much rain could we get? Well, over these next three, four days, I'm still thinking we could go towards an inch for many of our towns, a third to a quarter inch per day. Tonight, Minnesota temperatures, they are going to be in the 50s, 20% rain chance. 
Wisconsin, Michigan, 40% rain chance, lows in the 50s. Tomorrow, the Wisconsin, Michigan rain chance is 50% with highs again, upper 60s to 70. Minnesota numbers, mid 60s to 70 with a 40% rain chance. And then that chance becomes a 60% shot on Saturday. There's the 40% chance on Sunday. There's the break on Monday. And then it comes back Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. All right. Thanks, Dave. Well, after far too long, the Bulldogs are back at Amsoil this weekend for all to see, just in time for some huge games this weekend. CBS 3's Kelly Hinseth joins us now with the details. And Kelly, I think I can speak for all Bulldogs fans, including myself, but we're pretty excited to be back. Oh, 100%, Natalie. It's been over a year and a half since Amsoil Arena has been at full capacity with fans. But they're back this weekend for both the UMD men's and women's hockey teams. The men are on the road Friday night but are back in Duluth on Saturday night to take on Bemidji State. The women are home on both Friday and Saturday to welcome in the Gophers. What better series? Fans going to the game can expect to wear masks regardless of vaccination status. The Bulldogs also announced that they've already sold a record number of student season tickets. I think it's going to be a similar experience that they're used to. Uh, we're, there are a few changes, like we have more local, local foods that we are offering, but I think it's still going to be great hockey and ruckus fandom. So I think the atmosphere that people have come to expect at Amsoil will be the same. There is pent-up demand to come back to what is really the cathedral of hockey here in Duluth. It is expected to be a fun weekend for sure. One other big change, if you're looking for local beer or alcoholic beverages, they're now going to be available at every concession stand instead of out in the lobby. Yeah, definitely a fun weekend on the horizon. Excited to see some pictures and some videos of all those Bulldogs fans back in action at Amsoil. Kelly Henseth live for us in the newsroom tonight. Thanks, Kelly. Well, it's that time of the show where we get to talk about adoptable pets. Today's pet comes to us from Range Regional Animal Rescue. This is Poncho, Jackal, and Coco. There are all Chihuahua and Jack Russell Terrier mixes. Now, during their time at Range Regional, they've become much more social and are looking for a quiet home to settle down in. If you would like to set up an appointment to adopt Poncho, Jackal, or Coco, you can call the number listed on your screen. And tomorrow at 5, we'll have an adoptable dog here in studio, courtesy of our friends at Animal Allies in Duluth. So tune in tomorrow at 5 so you don't miss it. Silicon on the recent Texas abortion ban has been put on hold by a federal judge. We'll bring you all those details right after the break. I got into journalism when I was in high school, actually, and that's where I really fell in love with the news and the storytelling aspect of it. Being able to bring those things together and keep people informed. It's so important for us to be in a community like Duluth, to be able to hear your stories and then bring them to everybody else in the community. Watch Caitlin and Jenna in the morning at 5 and 6 a.m. You've seen the Maroon Tone, the movers and the shakers. Now watch the movie and shaking to the music you love. It's our annual Minnesota Ballet Celebrity Dance Challenge, Friday, October 8th at Marshall's for Joe Auditorium. We're going to pack the house with fun as area celebs pair up with our dance pros, and you pick the winner. Happy hour at 545, dancing at 7. Get tickets at Touch of Flash, at the door, or minnesotaballet.org. We thank our presenting sponsor, Pizza Luce, and also Touch of Flash and CBS3. Sports are my passion and the love of my life, and when you watch a sportscast, the biggest compliment that I get is that you seem so excited about what you're talking about and that's not an act for me. Who doesn't want to see someone, you know, deliver their news in a fun way? So if you love it, I love it, you're going to see you're, you're going to see the authenticity that I think I bring. Watch sports with Kelly Hinson weeknights on live local CBS3. Time for schools to reopen. There is some positive breaking news. We've got a lot of important new information for you and your family.
We've got new information now explaining why. Why should ordinary Americans care what's happening here in Ukraine? Deep divisions remain. Elizabeth, why did they kick you out? They are expecting public unrest. Why are they releasing these videos now? Police are pushing us back. We found one hell of a story of survival. That's why you have to do your own research to get to the truth. Hurricane Ida hit Louisiana hard. The people there, their families and businesses have a long road to recovery. And now it's time for each of us to help lift up Louisiana. Text Ida to 51555 and donate to the Salvation Army relief efforts as they provide relief to those impacted by Hurricane Ida. Learn more at CBS3Duluth.com or the CBS3 News app. Live, local, CBS3. Helping lift up Louisiana. judge has ordered Texas to temporarily suspend a new law banning most abortions in the state. The judge's decision stems from a lawsuit the Justice Department filed last month, just days after the law known as the Senate Bill 8 went into effect. Michael George reports the latest from New York. The Biden administration is marking what it calls an important step forward in restoring women's rights in Texas. District Judge Robert Pittman sided with the Justice Department, temporarily blocking the state's restrictive abortion law. In a 113-page opinion writing, quote, From the moment SB 8 went into effect, women have been unlawfully prevented from exercising control over their lives. This court will not sanction one more day of this offensive deprivation of such an important right. Basically what you saw the Department of Justice arguing is the substance of this law, there's no way it can be squared with our current precedent, which is, which is Roe v. Wade. Texas Governor Greg Abbott signed the measure into law in May. Our creators endowed us with the right to life. It took effect last month, outlawing abortions once embryonic activity is detected, usually around six weeks, before some women know they're pregnant. Under the law, private citizens can sue people who help patients get an abortion. It's at an all-time um, level of importance. Heather Palacios works for Planned Parenthood. She says women have been leaving Texas to get abortions in neighboring states. Last year, we saw around 250 patients from Texas across our affiliate. This year to date, we've seen more than 500. In a statement, the Biden administration cautioned the fight has only just begun, and it's unclear when abortion services might resume in Texas. The state has already announced its decision to file an appeal in the Fifth Circuit, which previously allowed the abortion restrictions to take effect. Michael George, CBS News, New York. The Supreme Court is taking up a separate Mississippi case in December that will likely impact the fate of the law in Texas and other states that have recently passed restriction abortion laws. Here's what we're working on tonight. 28 million children could soon be eligible for the Pfizer vaccine when the shot and smaller doses may be available. Plus, could mandatory vaccines for airline employees lead to a holiday travel nightmare this year? We'll explain. And how ransomware attacks against America's hospitals are leading to deadly consequences. The CBS Evening News is just minutes away. CBS 3 closed captioning is brought to you by Essentia Health. One in eight women will be diagnosed with breast cancer. Regular mammograms can help find it early. Schedule yours today. Whatever your water worry, Culligan Water can help. From value price softeners to the world's best and even salt free, no one has more solutions than Culligan to customize the best filtration for your home. The only water that comes with a van. Contact Culligan, the local water experts. Hurricane Ida hit Louisiana hard. The people there, their families and businesses have a long road to recovery. And now it's time for each of us to help lift up Louisiana. Text Ida to 51555 and donate to the South Salvation Army relief efforts as they provide relief to those impacted by Hurricane Ida. Learn more at CBS3Duluth.com or the CBS3 News app. Live, local, CBS3, helping lift up Louisiana. 
Mining. It's a part of Minnesota's history that affects everyone in the Northland still to this day. From environmental issues to economics and so much more. Join me, Kristen Bakke, every Tuesday for Eye on Mining. A fair and unbiased report that answers the tough questions surrounding the world of mining. Eye on Mining with Kristen Bakke. Tuesdays at 10 only on live local CBS3. Brought to you by Range Regional Airport. Heart attacks and strokes happen, even in the midst of COVID-19. And at least one will occur while you're watching this. Heart attacks and strokes are medical emergencies. If you experience symptoms of a heart attack or stroke, do not delay seeking care. Call 911 immediately. Hospitals are prepared and can safely treat you. Visit cdc.gov slash coronavirus to learn more. We're kicking off a new season in NYC. I'm putting the y'all in New York. You didn't even know it was there, but it is now. Welcome back to the CBS 3 News Live at 5. Here's a live look from Canal Park on this Thursday evening. Let's take a look back at today's top story and see what's coming up tonight at 6. Tonight at 5, we learned about Mayor Emily Larson's newly announced housing proposal that would bring $6 million investments in affordable housing in Duluth. City Councilor Zach Filipovich says it's much needed. And tonight at 6, a Northland dog is getting a second chance. Tune in at 6 o'clock to hear that heartwarming story. Well, that's your news at 5. The CBS 3 Evening News is, is next. We'll see you right back here tonight at 6.